In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to solve a linear equation that has a fraction in it. And the technique that we're going to use is we are going to be multiplying through by the least common denominator. If you do that as your very first step, then it is going to eliminate the fractions and then make the problem much easier for you to solve. So on this first equation, we've got 40 minus x over 6 equals x over 2. So I'm going to take a look at both of those denominators. I have a 6 and a 2, and I'm going to choose the least common denominator, which is 6. Both 2 and 6 go into 6. That's the smallest number that they both go into. So I am going to choose to multiply everything by that least common denominator of 6. Now I'm only going to write it once, and you can either do it on the left or the right side of the equation. It doesn't make any difference. And then I am going to distribute it times everything on the inside. So I'm going to take the 6 times the 40. Well, 6 times 40 is just going to be a regular 6 times 40, which is 240. All right, and then the minus. Now, when I take the 6 times the x over 6, the 6 is in the numerator, the 6 is in the denominator, so they're going to cross out, and the only thing that I'm going to be left with is the x. And then in this last one, x over 2 times 6. All right, the easiest way to do this, since um, I'm not going to cross anything out here, but I'm going to kind of like show you a shortcut. 6 divided by 2 times my numerator. So 6 divided by 2 is 3 times the x right there is going to give me a 3x. That's one easy way to look at it. Okay, then from there, after multiplying through by that least common denominator, then you have just a regular ordinary equation that you can solve. All right, I've got an x on both sides, so I'm going to add x to both sides and then cross out those x's. So then I get a 240 equals 4x. Dividing both sides by 4, I'm going to get 60 equal to x. All right, taking a look at this second problem. I've got a 3 and a 9 and a 3, so my least common denominator is going to be a 9. So I'm going to multiply the entire equation by that least common denominator of 9. When I do that, I will be distributing it to every term that is in that equation. So in this one, I'm going to have to do four distributive properties. All right, and again, I'm going to do the 9 when I distribute here, 9 divided by 3 is 3 times 2x is going to give me a 6x right there. The fraction goes away. This is not a fraction, so 9 times a negative x is just going to give me a negative 9x. When I distribute to this term, the 9s are going to cross out, leaving me with that x. You could also say 9 divided by 9 is 1 times x will leave me with an x. Now, multiplying it by the 7 thirds, 9 divided by 3 is 3, times 7 is going to be 21. All right, left-hand side, I can combine some like terms right there. I can do a plus minus on that if I really need to see that the, neg the 9 is negative. That's going to give me a negative 3x on the left-hand side and an x minus 21 on the right-hand side. I'm going to subtract x from both sides of the equation so that I can move my x's to the left-hand side. That'll give me a negative 4x is equal to a negative 21. Dividing both sides by negative 4, and let's actually show that. Dividing both sides by that negative 4. All right, negative divided by negative is going to be positive. 21 over 4, I don't have to go to a decimal right there. We can just consider this as a fraction and go into a mixed number. 4 goes into 21 five times with one left over, so 5 and 1 fourth. All right, that way you don't have to go to a decimal and you don't have to um, decide how you're going to round it. Just turn that into a mixed number. All right, doing two more examples. This time now we're going to take a look at those linear equations, but my numerators are going to involve some binomial terms as opposed to just single, single terms. All right, so the process is still going to be the same. I'm going to go through here. I'm going to take a look at all of my denominators. I've got a 7 and a 3, so my least common denominator is going to be a 21. So I'm going to, again, distribute that to each of the terms on the inside. All right, now on this one right here, 
all right, I do need to realize that this is going to be a binomial. So it might be a good idea to go ahead and put a set of parentheses around that so that we don't forget that that x minus 15 really is a binomial. All right, now when I go to distribute the 21 to the x over 3, I can do 21 divided by 3 is 7 times the x on top. It's going to get me a 7x. 21 times the 1, just regular numbers there, so I've got a 21. Now, when I do the distributing property to this last one, I'm going to do 21 divided by 7, and that gets me a 3. The 3 must be multiplied by that binomial, but as opposed to trying to do it in my head, I'm going to just show 3 times that binomial that's in that numerator. That way I'm going to not mess up this distributive property which must occur because that x minus 15 is definitely a binomial. So I would be distributing the 3, multiplying it by everything on the inside. So my next line would look like a 7x is equal to 21 plus 3 times x, 3x, 3 times 15 will be 45. Combining some like terms over here on the right hand side, I've got a 21 minus 45, that should be a negative 24. So 7x equals keeping that 3x and then minus 24. Last step there, subtracting 3x from both sides of the equation. The 3x minus 3x is going to go away, leaving me with a 4x equal to a negative 24. And then dividing both sides by that 4, I'll get an x equal to a negative 6. All right, the trick here being um, that numerator being a binomial. Okay, um, now on the last one, again, I have binomials in two different locations in my numerator, so I will add that set of parentheses to both of them just so that I remember that they are binomials. And then this one, even a little bit more tricky because it's got that negative in there, so when you do the distributive property, you're definitely going to um, want to remember that that leading coefficient there is going to be negative. So, again, coming up with the least common denominator, I've got a 3 and a 5. So 3 times 5, least common denominator is going to be a 15. After multiplying through by that least common denominator, all of your fractions should be gone at that point. So 15 times the first term, 15 times the second one, and 15 times that third one. Okay, doing it like we have been doing it. 15 divided by 5 gives me a 3 times whatever's in the numerator. So I'm going to write the 3 down and then times what that numerator is. 15 times the 4, 4 is an ordinary number, so I'll have a 60 right there. Now I'm going to have a minus right here. That minus sign comes down. 15 divided by 3 gives me a 5 times the numerator. So 5 times the numerator of x plus 5. All right, in every one of these, as soon as you multiply through by that least common denominator, the fractions go away, which is what we are wanting to do. Now, just a suggestion right here, a lot of people will make the mistake they'll do 5 times x, maybe even forget to distribute the 5 to that, that 5 over there. All right, but this, you've got to recognize, is a negative 5. Okay, you could do a plus minus to help you, all right, but just know that when you distribute right there, it's got to be a negative 5 times 5. All right, so coming down here, let's do some distributive property. We'll distribute the 3 all in the same step as we distribute the negative 5. So 3 times x, 3x. Three, 3 times 2, 6. The 60 is going to stay because I'm not doing anything with that. Plus a negative 5x and plus a negative 25. You could do minus on both of those as well. It doesn't make any difference how you're going to do that. Um, let's go ahead and combine some like terms. We've got a 60 and a negative 25 on the right. Putting those two together, I should end up with 35 over there. So 3x plus 6 equals, let's write that as a negative 5x, and then a plus 35. Now at this point, I usually do everything all in the same step, um, showing what we'll do it with two different colors here. I know I need to add 5x to both sides so that minus 5x plus 5x goes away. So I'll do that in one color. And then I also go ahead and subtract 6 in the same step. So subtract 6 there, 6 minus 6 is going to go away. Subtract 6 over here. Putting these two together, I'll get an 8x. 
and then subtracting those over there I get a 29. Here again when we divide both sides of the equation by 8. All right, no need to put this into a decimal because then how are you going to round? So you might as well just treat this as an improper fraction and turn it into a mixed number. So in other words, 8 goes into 29 three times with 5 left over. So 3 and 5 eighths. All right, so just four nice little linear equations that have fractions in them and using that technique of multiplying through by the, the least common denominator in order to eliminate the fractions. Definitely thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.